Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. Today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Anacubic Mega Zero, and guess what? There is a coupon code in the description below, so after the video, take a look at that coupon code and maybe pick one up. These are crazy cheap, and I was pretty happy with it. Let's take a look. Okay, so this again is the Anycubic Zero, Mega Zero, uh, and it is a nice little printer. Uh, we're talking about a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250. It has uh, auto resume if it's sort of the battery down, or the battery, you know, the power goes out. And mine, power did go out actually at one point and started right back on up with uh, this right here. So that was really nice that that happened. Looking at my notes here, some of the things I really like about this printer um, are uh, A, the build volume is really nice. It's a, you know, sort of an Ender sort of style uh, size. It's not a huge uh, 300 by 300, 400 by, it's a 220. Let me look at it again to make sure I get this right. It's a 220 by 220 by 250, which still does pretty good. I printed this entire thing on here, and I'm printing the back of this helmet piece on here too, will also fit. So you can still print some decent size things on here. Uh, I also love the sort of slim line of the, of the power box here. Uh, it's nice and low, it's short. I mean, it's maybe two inches high and maybe six inches long, so it's, it's really a nice form factor. Uh, I do also like the uh, extruder very much. It's sort of like a, a sort of like a Titan. It, it isn't, but it's sort of. One of the things I really love about it is the uh, PTFE tube here in the back. And if you've got an ender, if you've got one where you know your filament is mounted up here, and it goes in the boat, and it goes in the extruder, it really sort of pulls up on that and actually starts edging into, uh, grooving into your extruder. That has happened to me before on my Ender until I switched it to like an all metal. Or you end up printing something so that it holds it, the, you know, holds it out farther. But that's what this uh, tubing does and it's a really nice touch. I really like that. Um, let's see, the other thing that I find really uh, helpful, I like the bigger sort of knobs down here when you're looking at leveling. It was very easy to level the machine, a uh, piece of paper, of course, the usual. It does have that four point system that you can use. I tend to just disable the, the motors and then just move it around myself, but I did test it with that and it did fine. Now, the really the only drawback to this printer, well, A, let's talk about one of the huge benefit or the huge you know, selling points of this printer. It's $170. So it's a sub $200 printer, super sturdy construction, super easy to put together. Uh, you're seeing me putting it together someplace in this video, uh, or who knows, I might put it at the end sped up, because it comes together almost entirely, like the bed is totally uh, on these rails, which is nice, it doesn't use the little sort of rollers, it's firmly mounted on these rails, and this thing is solid. So it was super easy to put together, uh, the one drawback that might preclude you from picking this up is the fact that the bed is not heated. It is a non-heated bed. So you are kind of limited to, you know, PLA. Uh, you might be able to do some TPU, but here's the problem. I live in a cold climate and it is 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. And as you can see, I'm wearing a fleece because I'm in the basement, that's where my shop is. And it's cold down here. Yes, it isn't 20, but it's a good 60 degrees, you know, uh, if not colder, no, it's colder than 60 degrees. Um, so the first few prints that I tried did not adhere, uh, even though I really leveled that sucker. And then I went ahead and leveled it just a little bit more. Like I got it so that it's might probably be scraping a little too much, but it, it puts a nice bead down. Uh, I'm happy with that first layer. It's not going anywhere. But once I gave it some uh, shots of some Aquanet from the old CVS, sprayed it on the bed, it adhered really well. Uh, so much so that when I printed the owl, we'll look at in a minute, 
and the mask, I had to use a scraper to get it off. And I really had to go at it with that scraper to get that thing off. So once it adheres, um, and I, I want to say it was the second time, second print, where um, the second print I got it to stick. Uh, so a little bit of hairspray, it worked just fine. So that is the rub. If you're looking to do something that needs a heated bed, this is not something you're going to want to pick up. You need a heated bed. You can't use this. If you're looking at PLA stuff, uh, especially if you live in warmer climates, again, though, it's cold down here. I got that to work just fine. This uh, Red Guardian face mask, uh, I'm putting the whole helmet on here. The helmet part will actually fit on here because uh, it's sort of like a form-fit helmet. And that will print on here. It stuck amazingly well. I had to you know, use the scraper to get that up. So once you dial it in, use some hairspray or some, some glue stick. Uh, I don't care for the glue stick. I like the hairspray. I think it works better. At least it always has for me. Uh, and it's not as messy. And when I need a little extra hold, uh, I've got it. It's right there. So this is doing really well with PLA. I'm very happy with it. This is an initial review. I'm going to be printing the rest of this helmet uh, out on here and seeing how it goes. I'll be printing more and more uh, little stuff on here testing it out but here's the initial review pretty tight printer uh it printed this face mask out very quickly uh, very great quality i'm very pleased with it there is some lining but no more than before this is printed at a point two so if i went at a point one and i slowed the speed down which i usually do when i'm printing things that i don't really need to be printed in a hurry um that would be even finer which which i will do next time and i'm actually doing for the helmet part um, this will take me maybe like four or five days because I've slowed it down and it's a point one. It might take about five days actually. So why be in a hurry? Less sanding. I don't want to have to sand this as much. So if you're looking to pick up your first printer or maybe just a, another printer to sort of bang smaller prints out on uh, and you don't need a heated bed, the Anacubic Mega Zero is a pretty tight printer. Now, the links are below where you can pick this up. And, of course, I also have a coupon code for anyone who's watching to go over and pick one of these up. Now, I love doing printer reviews. Uh, if you'd like to see more, you know, put it in the description below what you'd like to see reviewed. I buy most of these printers myself, if not all of them. Uh, this was sent to me by Anacubic, so thank you, Anacubic. I appreciate that. And uh, so maybe we'll have some more reviews in the future. So, again, go in the links below and check it out. If you like this video, click like and subscribe, hit the little bell, and then you'll know when more videos come up in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart, unpause the Red Guardian helmet part of this. And if you're looking at picking one of these up, if you wanna pick one up for the for the upcoming Black Widow movie, I uh, have it over on my Etsy page, uh, the helmet file. It's uh, coming in at, I think, $15. I believe it is on sale this month for 20% off if you're looking to pick one up. So let's go ahead and unpause this. Resume print. And of course we're moving back down. And I've slowed it down a little bit because I liked the first layer to go down even slower than I set it in my slicer. And it seems, uh, there we go. It went right back down. And we are good to go. So I'll, uh, you know tweet out or instagram out what this thing looks like the helmet part in a couple days and that's it guys thanks a lot for watching i really appreciate it have a great day